Welcome back, everybody, to another episode of the College Express Podcast. My name is Tyler, and I'm always joined with Karen and Mackenzie. And we have a very special guest today. Our special guest is... Hey, I'm Christina. <laughs> um, so I am a digital advertising specialist at Carnegie Dartlet. And where did you go to school, Christina? I went to Westfield State University in Westfield, Massachusetts. All right, awesome. So today we're going to be talking all about our college decisions and what made you decide to go there and what made us decide to go to the schools that we went to. And uh, we're just going to jump right in. So buckle that seatbelt. Let's do this. Uh, yeah, so our first question is how did we decide on what college to go to? And this came from Annalise Dance, 247. Um, so I chose based off of first I thought about if I wanted to commute or if I wanted to dorm. Um, and originally I was just going to commute, so I ended up looking at colleges near me and then if there are any relatives I could live with that I was going to like commute from, I guess. So I looked in Georgia at a couple of colleges and then I looked, um, I'm from Connecticut originally, right on the border of Massachusetts, so I ended up looking at some of the schools nearby there and then decided not going to Georgia because... <laughs> Can't leave the social life of all my friends. Um, but then I really kind of narrowed it down. I'm from a small town. Some of the colleges in Connecticut that I looked at were larger. So I basically just loved that smaller feel, and I didn't want to get lost at school. So <laughs> that was a good starting point. And then from there, I just, I don't know, I just kind of looked around. Um, you can kind of feel it if you tour the campus. And that's where I felt like it was pretty. I could see myself enjoying the campus green because Westfield has a really cool campus green. Um, and it helped that I saw the campus in the in the spring. So mm-hmm. everyone was outside and yeah. playing on the green. And I think there was cornhole going on. And Did some... you commute? I, I didn't end up uh, commuting, you didn't. actually. <laughs> I was going to say. <laughs> no. <laughs> So I did choose base off of if I was going to commute, but then I ended up dorming anyways. Um, Always a nice choice. Yeah, it was it's like I, a good experience. Yeah. And you that's all what, weekends too, right? Yeah. yeah, and that's what everybody told me. They were like, just <clears throat> just try dorming for a year, and then I could go from there. So I decided to do that. Ended up dorming all four years. Um, but it was nice that I was close to home because I did go whenever I needed. I could switch out my... Summer clothes and winter clothes easily. (laughs) Free laundry. (laughs) Free laundry. Get some food while I'm home. So non-cat food. Also cat (laughs) food. I hear cat food too. (laughs) Cat, cat, cat food. No, 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 cat food. Same thing. I was like, what is champagne? Some ways. (laughs) Food? Do you guys get? (laughs) It's not that bad. (laughs) You got dog food, right? (laughs) I went for the table. (laughs) But yeah. My, uh, yeah, I think uh, campus tours, we talked about, I think, was it last podcast? One of the podcasts we talked about campus visiting. Yeah. And uh, that, for me, was such a huge eye-opener. I, and we also talked about having the ability to use a virtual reality headset or just, like, even a virtual tour and clicking around. Um, because it is so important that you see it and you actually, as you mentioned, you feel like, hey, I could see myself here. Mm-hmm. Um, and that was for me uh, with my cousin joining a bunch of his college campus tours because he was a year ahead of me. And when I went to Champlain, I was like, this is the town. This is everything I like. A nice small campus. Uh, definitely not going to get lost there. Uh, and so for me, like the, the campus tours was a, a huge, huge thing. Um, but there's also a bunch of other factors that come into it, too. Um, and I am notorious for bringing it up on the podcast about spreadsheets. Uh, (laughs) spreadsheets and uh, just having a plan seeing what you are comparing and contrasting Uh, College Express has a college compare tool that you can use sweet plug Um, so we also have a spreadsheet we also we also have a spreadsheet that you can use as well too that's on uh, one of the articles so uh, feel free to use those resources because it comes down you can actually compare the financial costs you can compare what sports and activities are there you can compare location based if you want to go home and travel um, and then I think from seeing it from that bigger picture, you get an idea of this fits on paper, but do I fit there? Yeah. And that's where the college campus tours come into play. 
Um, also, money is a huge factor too, so you might fall in love with something and not be able to go there, which is a bummer. Um, and we will go into some financial aid stuff at the end of this podcast, but um, just keep that in mind as you're looking and trying to find the right fit for you. And um, yeah, I think that's a, a big thing. Uh, you also mentioned, uh, which jogged my memory, about friends and going away from your friends and trying to figure that out. Um, for me, that was a thing too. I wanted to go away, but I wanted to be far enough away that my parents couldn't come in uh, and just be like, hey, how's it going? Uh, which now is uh, a reality of my life because uh, I live 20 minutes from my parents and 10 minutes from my in-laws. So now is terrible. <laughs> I hope you guys don't want to. <laughs> but uh, I ended up going to Vermont, which was ended up being three and a half-ish hours from where I grew up. And that was perfect. Uh, I was able to come back on long weekends if I wanted to for coming home for vacations and whatnot. It was really easy. I didn't have to buy a plane ticket. didn't have to figure any of that stuff out. Um, so location-wise, uh, was was a big deal to me for college, too. Um, yeah, I mean, also, the thing that I took into account, which I completely forgot, was I didn't go to a Georgia school because that was too far from Connecticut, but one of the schools I was contemplating was a school that I, I think everyone in my high school went to because mm-hmm. it was, like, the default. And I did look at it, and I was considering it, but I chose Westfield because it was... You know, a couple people from my hometown went there. I didn't know a couple familiar faces, but it wasn't everyone. I could still make new friends, and, you know, coming from a small town where everybody knows everybody's business, I didn't need that at the college of my entire high school. So So it was comfort, but not. I did the opposite of that. I had gone to the same school for six years. It was a six-year school. I didn't get it back twice. Um, but it was a six-year school. I had known the same people for all six years. And I was like, love you all. I'm done. And I needed to go. Like, I felt... Explore. Yeah. To me, I felt like I was kind of in a box where I, a lot of people I felt looked at me the same way that I had been, that I was when I was 13 and I was 18 now. And I was an entirely different person. And I said, I want to be able to showcase this new me. I want to be able to explore who I am, define who I am now rather than who I was um, six years ago. So for me, it was a really big deal to go someplace that no one else went. And um, I had a lot of, like, my top two schools, no one from my high school was going to. Um, And I think I've mentioned this before, one girl that I went to high school with was actually in Burlington, and I didn't run into her except for one time senior year. And then I ran into her again at the reunion, and she hugged me. And I'm like, we didn't talk ever. <laughs> this is weird. <laughs> she just gave me a huge hug, and I'm like, ah. Um, See, I was the same way. Yeah. I didn't want to go to a school with people I went to high school with. I was like at that point where I needed to separate from yeah. them. And they were all going, I, mean, I, we, I went to school in Mass. They were all going up north to like New Hampshire. Yep. So I, I was like, I'll go south. <laughs> go to Rhode Island. Um, and I think there was, like, one girl from my high school who went to URI, too, and I never saw her, never yeah. talked to her. I think, like, I saw her once, and she's like, oh, we have to catch up. I'm like, sure. <laughs> sure we do. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> never saw her to. again. But going back to also, like, location, because mm. um, I was between two schools my senior year, UMaine and URI, and they're pretty much the same school. The only difference is, like, location. Like, they're both even, like, two hours from my house. Like, one's right on the border of Canada. The other one's on the ocean. So, um, it came down to me revisiting the school because I'd already been to both of them at least once. Mm -hmm. So, I went back for Accepted Students Day in April. And when I went to UMaine, it was still, like, 20 degrees and foggy and gross out. It was a beautiful campus, but... It was very cold, and there's not much around Ornor, Maine. Canada's, like, maybe, like, an hour from the school, but there's still not much over the border when you still have get to, to drive Canada. further. <laughs> yeah. And then um, you're right. It was, like, you know, a sunny, beautiful day, and then I went to the beach after, and the yep. beaches there are all beautiful. And so I was, like, I shouldn't be making my college decision based on this, the fact that it's by the beach, but I'm, like, both schools have what I want for yep. my program, like, that. It's just going to be a matter of which school. And that's what it comes down to when you're looking at similar schools, especially. Um, Location's really important, but also what's important is the academics. Because, you know, you learn stuff there. Is that important? Uh, Kind of, (laughs) a little bit. Um, 
One of the things that I loved about Champlain was I got to go to this conference they had. It was called the Young Writers Conference. And Jim Eliphasen, shout out to you. It was probably the reason I went to Champlain uh, in the end because I got to take little seminars with different faculty members who taught in the writing program at Champlain. And I was like, this is amazing. I want to take classes with these professors. I really enjoyed learning from them, talking to them. Uh, They brought in other speakers from the area, different writers from the area to talk to us, to teach us different things. And I said, these are the opportunities that I'm going to have. Perfect. Put me here. Um, And that ended up, I think, being the tiebreaker um, between several, a couple of other colleges that were pretty similar with academics. I was like, well, I could get a good education here, here, here. But I really like the professors here. Um, And I liked the small class sizes. I liked the fact that it was a smaller school. And these are all factors that you want to bring into it. So a lot of people will want that sort of larger, like, I can disappear in the lecture hall kind of thing. Other people will like that smaller. We had, I don't think I ever had a lecture at Champlain. It was all discussion-based. Yeah. Um, and I really liked that, being able to share my opinions, read different things. And How many were your people. classes? Um, some were a small. I had one class that was six people. How Two many? classes that were six the, people. The, no yeah. pressure. Yeah, the Better raise your hand. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, that was, what, it was my copy editing class, and they almost didn't offer it, but I was like, I need this. <laughs> and a couple of the people were like, we need this. So they gave it to us. And then um, I think my largest class was maybe 12. 20 something maybe like 25 28 and that was like one class I went to a big school so like my small class was like 20 people yeah and then the big class I had lectures yeah but I I also like I liked getting lost in the yeah I like being in the big different people (laughs) yeah So, yeah, don't just consider, like, people... Oh, and plus, people will tell you different things, like, you should go to lecture schools. If that's not how you learn, if you're a more visual-based person, find a school that's going to teach you visually or have options for you to learn visually and look for professors within that school that teach the ways that you want to learn uh, because that's going to be very important to your education, which college is kind of about. Mm-hmm. And even um, going off of that, too, for me, having the night over, um, yeah. that's a huge deal because you get to go there and actually live with other students that are currently going to the school. And then if those students, by chance, are into the same stuff that you are, um, they're going to show you around the town, they're going to show you around that, that those things click with you, and you might get introduced as a pro- <laughs> some professor <laughs> too. Um, so while you're going on these tours, and be like, oh, you're into web design, let me introduce you to Mr. Frank Catavachel. Um And then you'll meet Frank and, you know... Is that a real name? Stuff. Yeah. Uh, oh, okay. Frank's written a bunch of books in the web community. So, oh, I'm sorry, I'll I haven't read Frank. those yet. <laughs> um, so, yeah, it, it's a great opportunity to go there, live in the dorm, live in the city, go to a class if you really want to. Uh, my friend Bobby, when he came up to visit me, didn't really officially have an overnight thing. I was like, hey, I want to just like come up and hang out. I was like, cool. So I figured, hey, he's coming up to party, <laughs> um, which we did. But then the next morning, he came to class with me, which was strange. Um, <laughs> Email the professor if you're going to do that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I did make sure uh, that was fine. And uh, it was very interesting because he had never gone to college before. You know, like throw up right now. Um, <laughs> You're having a day, aren't you? <laughs> so um, he had never been to college before, first time on campus. He got to meet a bunch of different people. He ended up going to UMass Lowell, nice. and um, he graduated a year after we did, but he also switched majors too. Uh, so, yeah, take, take the opportunities that you have to get on campus. And, again, if you can't physically make it to the campus, take a virtual tour yeah. um, and just kind of look around and see. And if you can interact with people, like, great, great living in the – 2019s because you can now jump on and talk to people in an instant um, and really get connected to them before you even step foot on the campus. So, uh, oh, go ahead. No. Um, <laughs> I was also going to say, like, going off of that, get yourself there to see it. Don't be against looking. Like, yeah. the worst that's going to happen is you're going to say, mm, nope, not for me. Because, fun little fact about me going to Westfield. It, I think maybe my sophomore year in high school, my mom drove myself and my best friend up to Westfield and was like, there's this cool college. It's like a half hour away. You could commute. At the time, I thought I was going to. And she drove us there, and she's like, yeah, and I think the mascot's an owl. And I was like, no, I'm not going to a school where the mascot's an owl. What am I going to say? Hoot, hoot. Like, 
<laughs> so cool. <laughs> and I was like, nope, not going to do Westfield. Don't want any part of it. Not even going to look at it. Well, three years later, and as she I'm was applying to colleges, <laughs> I was, who <laughs> knew? owls. There's a lot of owl pride here. Yeah. I flew the nest, so. <laughs> yep. Yep. So, Don't you have a bunch of, like, owl oh, now stuff I'm now? All about owls. <laughs> it just happens, but, um, I mean, take Your the time Your mascot becomes you. It does. Yeah. it does. Especially no. sometimes. <laughs> well, Alex, not a shame point. Nope. nope. <laughs> we were the Rams. I don't know. Owls are trendy, stuff. so, yeah. you know, That's true. I There's hit it at the right point. Stuff. Yeah. There's not a lot of Ram stuff. Um, excuse start. me, I'm an Aries. <laughs> Sorry. Is it a Ram? It is. <laughs> <laughs> All about the Rams. <laughs> not the team, though. Go Patriots. <laughs> <laughs> but. Yeah, so definitely be a little bit more. Definitely like your campus. <laughs> yeah, and your your opinions could change from sophomore year in high school to even just junior, senior. Yeah, revisit the campus. Yeah. Uh, and that's and that's yeah. important if you can again. But um, even um, just getting into it, college fairs too will give you a ton of information. Um, and it, that goes back to the spreadsheet thing of being able to look at all the pamphlets and be like, <laughs> yeah, spreadsheets. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah, if you if you're into that. <laughs> He'll send you a spreadsheet. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I will. Um, I want to pull from your point about your friend coming to visit you on campus. Yeah. Because there are flying programs, there are stayover programs. Um, sometimes those cost money. Sometimes the colleges will offer money for you to come to mm-hmm. them because um, they want you to apply and they want you to go there. And if that's it's going to help you, like they they have options available. But if you don't know how to find those or you're not interested in those, do go visit friends on college campuses, like upperclassmen, friends who've already graduated, and you're like, oh, you go to this school I've never heard of. Can I come up for a couple of days and check it out? Um, we've mentioned before in the past that sometimes you get days off from school to go visit okay. colleges. So say so like, oh, I'm going to visit Westfield State. No, it's just Westfield. No, it's Westfield State. Oh, Westfield State. State. Okay. Go out. I was, I was up at Westfield um, So I'm going to go to Westfield State for a, a stayover program, and your school will be like, totally, go for it. And then you go and you sit in on class, and you get to see what the environment's like, and it's less expensive because you don't have to pay for that kind of thing. You're going to visit your friend. Um, so that can be pretty fun. And you can do those over breaks, too, if you want to go to a bunch of different schools. And if you do it with a friend, you get a real student feel. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Plus, like, it's more personal. Let's be honest. Yeah. Yeah. You can get the tours from the campus are great, but nothing beats the personal touches of like, yeah, this the pizza is really good, but like there's also a Mexican place on the other side of campus. That's where everybody goes when like you want to put Mexican on your pizza. When they go to Mayo, I don't yeah. know. Yeah, <laughs> like then, you get those little touches. Yeah. No, I agree, and I think like actually following someone throughout the day and, like, seeing, you know, what they do when they wake up, like, going to the dining hall, experience that if you can go with them to the dining hall, because that's very different. And the food is not very good. Sometimes it's kibble. (laughs) (laughs) So you got to experience that. And then going to class, because classes in college are very different than high school. And when you're going to fit your nap in. you got to find Netflix. Yeah. That's Um, something you do. (laughs) Another important college visit is the admitted students deck. Uh, because if you would get accepted to the school, you want to go to at least one of their accepted students' days to meet the other people you're going to go to school with. Because um, as much as the people, the students that already go to school there are your peers, the people that are entering at the same year, year as you are, I don't want to say more importantly your peers, but you, they're going to be the first people you're interacting with on campus. Yeah, they're going to be in your uh, dorms, they're going to be in your classes. Get a roommate. Yeah, yeah I was just going to say, get a roommate. roommate. And get a feel for the if it's the environment that you want to be in. Because sometimes classes will change. Like each class has a different vibe going on. So if yeah. the class that um, is coming in doesn't have the right vibe, you're like, oh, these are all party people, and I don't want to do that. Then you know ahead of time, like that's you're going to be finding different people in that in those niches. Um, whereas you can go to a different school and be like, oh, everyone here is all about studying. Yes, that's totally me. Um, <laughs> is that you? <laughs> Maybe you're a party person. That's fine. <laughs> Maybe you're both. Maybe you yeah. want to nap one day. Maybe you want to party the next. That's not wrong. And study in between. <laughs> and maybe there's a college and with the vibe just too. like that. <laughs> um, also, well, there was a trend with me, but also I would say think about the program you want to do. Mm-hmm. 
mm-hmm. for academics because no surprise I changed that too and but I chose Westfield also because they were a teaching college like they're known for all of their education majors I think they're set like the other one is criminal justice but I was like I'm gonna be a teacher that's what I'm gonna do I want to do that you're doing a great job at that thank you <laughs> thank you um, but, <laughs> people right now. <laughs> You're in my first classroom. Um, no, so that was what I thought I was going to do, and that helped me ch- narrow it down, I guess, from the hundreds and thousands of colleges you can choose. But then I just switched my major to communication, yeah, and it's fine. That's, um, but, like, vice versa of that, too, is if um, I mentioned financial and having issues getting into a school, and if you want to really go to a school and you don't have the means to do so initially, go to a community college is perfectly acceptable and take all your gen cred first Mm -hmm. and then transfer into the school and it's gonna be a lot more manageable for you to pay off that way. Um, So just as a heads up, you might not be able to decide on the college. It's like, oh, this is the one I really wanna go to, but I can't afford it. Just feel free to go for the one that's a little bit easier to pay off and then you're able to move in. Plus you can get more scholarship that way. True. Yeah. Especially if your grades were like not stellar in high school and you go to a community college, you get stellar grades there. You'll get merit scholarships plus there are scholarships that are specific to transfer students. More on that later when we get to financial aid for college. Also, you could do a transfer if, or not a transfer, well, you're going to transfer, but you could do a community <laughs> college um, if you don't know what four year school to do. Yep. If there's a close community college, it's cheaper to start there and transfer to a school you really want to go to later on than start at an expensive school and go to another expensive school. So, Also, don't count out trade schools in your area. Because, yeah. I mean, we talk a lot about four-year schools, but there's tons of great trades that you can do, and if that's what interests you, check that out. Don't let anyone tell you that you have to go to whatever four-year school if you're like, oh, I'd rather go to the Ben Franklin Institute and learn X, Y, Z and get a really good job with that. Trades make bank and they're in demand. Yeah. <laughs> Up. And <laughs> let's be honest, they usually, well, sometimes, usually, are less than four years. Yep. So if yeah. you, okay. and if you're hands-on, sometimes it's just easier. The second question is, how do you deal with rejection of not getting into certain schools? So I say for this, definitely have, like, a reach school or a dream school, but don't put all your eggs in one basket. Like, have the backup schools, um... Have at least one school you're like 99% sure you'll get into. That way if maybe for some reason you don't get into like three out of the four schools, you have that at least one backup and then you can go to that backup school for maybe a year, half a year and work on getting your grades up and then going to a school, applying again to the school and going there. Um, I applied to a lot of safe schools. Uh, not safe, but Yeah. Safe schools. schools are sure. They were good. They're good schools, yeah. but I was like, I'm pretty sure I'd get into these. I was a very average student, so I wasn't too worried. I did get waitlisted from Endicott, but that's because I applied late. <laughs> I missed the deadline, and I still sent my application. So I kind of knew that I wasn't going to get in, and they did wait- waitlist me, and then I just, I wasn't really that interested, so I didn't keep going. Um... But I say for rejection, definitely, um, you know, it is sad and it can happen to a lot of people. So I'd say, like, don't get your hopes up too much and then just, you know, take your time. Try going to another school and then reapplying or maybe if you don't like that school, transferring to another one. Like, you always have that option of transferring. That's about it. Um, there's, uh, I was going to go off one of your points. Uh, I'll go for the last one. Um, (laughs) If you get rejected from there and if it's because, oh, uh, if it's because of grades or something, you can try to appeal um, the decision. Uh, So there's an article about it on College Express actually about how to write your appeal. But if you end up, you know, your mid semester grades are like, eh, but then your like end of semester grades are stellar, you can try sending it to college and say, look, here's XYZ reason that you should let me into the college, reconsider your, uh, your decision very politely, very standardly, not like, you should let me in, here's why. <laughs> no, that's exactly how you yeah. <laughs> Send them a video of you just doing that. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, you know, you don't want to be aggressive with it, but there are, like, polite ways to do it. Um, also, like we talked about uh, in the last question, uh, 
going to a community college for a couple of years and then saying, look, here are fantastic grades and then trying to transfer into that college as well, um, especially if it's like a school that has an articulation agreement with a certain community college. That's an easy way to get in um, to that school. Well, it's even uh, bouncing off of that point, too, is if you're, we talked about majors and wanting to go for a specific major to a, a school, and if you have your heart set on a specific major and you get denied, reapply for a different major, yep. um, and then you can work inside of that silo <laughs> and, and kind of make your way into that program. So there's um, that route, too, which ends up working out great. But, I mean, let's get to the real point here. So how do you deal with rejection? Yep. Jazz music and ice cream. <laughs> Right. So jazz music. You gotta love that song. Right? <laughs> um, I love your advice. Great. Yeah. I'll go with the jazz music too, yeah. But uh, yeah, rejection is like that. Nobody likes being rejected. Um, but it's with everything, is uh, if you don't try and then receive whatever the, the outcome is, at least you tried. Um, yeah. So it's gonna hurt for two seconds, whatever it is. Uh, two it, seconds. Everybody <laughs> takes, yeah. it, however long it takes to finish the ice cream, listen to the song. <laughs> but. It only takes what I will two say seconds. is, yeah. Well, <laughs> it takes um, me two seconds for ice cream. <laughs> the, uh, you melt it and then drink yeah. it. <laughs> microwave. it. <laughs> well, next video. Like, yeah. 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 Next college cooking. <laughs> Rejection <laughs> ice cream in the microwave. <laughs> oh my god. Um, but what I was gonna say though is for for me personally, I what Mackenzie had said was I applied to five different schools and I definitely had like reach schools and then I had the ones that I felt like I was definitely going to get into. Um, but just like a fun story, I guess fun now, but looking back on it, it not so fun, was uh, they start coming in, right? You get your acceptance letters and your You're making me nervous. <laughs> no, no, no. So, <laughs> not yet. <laughs> uh, so my first one comes in is from Stonehill College. I was like, easy. This is my one of the easy schools. I opened up. You've been rejected. Like, oh no! Uh, so it ended up working out. That was the only one that rejected me out of the five. So the reach school I got into, but that one for whatever reason, I don't know. Um, Stonehill. <laughs> but um, yeah, they, 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 they accepted me. They just didn't give me uh, enough money. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, it's um, I th th that's the one thing is you don't be nervous when you get that in the mail and especially if it's the first one of your letters coming back yep. and it's a rejection letter, <laughs> uh, don't let it get you down. Uh, the The main thing is even if you get rejected to all your schools, which is worst case scenario and probably won't happen to most of you, you still have the option of going to a trade school, of getting a job, doing whatever. Um, it, it's not the end of the world and then you can always get into a, a lower tier school and work your way up too. So. I know College Express is all about college and all about getting into college and everything, but there are other things that you can yeah. do. So don't be discouraged if um, you get rejected hard. Also, <laughs> well, I'm going to be obnoxious per usual for me um, and be very cheesy, but like I'm a firm believer in like sometimes everything's just meant to be. Yeah. That was not, that was very ironic. No, that's legit, though. I, I well, I said you. sometimes everything. Oh, that's <laughs> funny. Sometimes um, everything. No, I think, like, everything <laughs> happens for a reason, and, you know, you'll probably end up where you're supposed to be. Like, I I didn't get it rejected, but I didn't apply to a lot. Um, I probably would have if I applied to more reach <laughs> schools. Didn't even bother. Um, but my best friend got rejected from Westfield, Mm -hmm. And she thought she was going to come, like, we were like, this is going to be great. We're going to be right there. We're going to be close to home. We can hang out all the time still. And it was for the best. She went to um, Central Connecticut State. And, I mean, we both, like, got to make more friends. We got to do our own things, explore our own ways for four years. We're still super close in, in her wedding, like, this year. So, I mean, it all works out. She was super bummed. Ate some ice cream. I don't. Know. I think. Music? I think we skipped. Maybe Carly Rae Jepsen at the time. I don't know. Yeah. But um, she's not, she's not quite Jepsen. jazz. But not quite jazz. She'll, but she'll, bump she'll you do up. a trick. Yeah, she's got some interesting music choices over there. <laughs> jazz. I'm thinking Carly of Rae classic Jepsen. Call Me Maybe. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, she's she's got a good, couple of good bops. Helps you get get up in the mood. Get yeah, through a awesome. pint yeah. of ice cream. So that's what it takes. A couple bops. Yeah, a couple, couple bops. <laughs> A couple of bops and Ben and Listen Jerry's. Listen some bopping music. So. Whatever. You're done. <laughs> yeah. 
We're not cool enough, apparently. Oh, no. Jazz. <laughs> um, yeah. Just be positive. Another way to, to deal with the rejection is to make sure that you don't go, apply to any schools that you don't want to go to. So, um, also, yeah. yeah. Then, um, just on that point, too, for money-wise. Yep. Um, because you most of the time you have an application fee. Yeah. So don't go crazy, yeah. especially if you're not interested in going Yeah, there. I am... Um, I like if you if don't apply to a safety school and be like eh, it's a safety school whatever I don't really want to go there and then if like the rest of your schools are reaches that's like if you're applying to all Ivies and then you apply to the one state school that you don't want to go to um, then if you get rejected from all the Ivies which even if you have amazing grades and you do everything like you're never guaranteed to get into an Ivy League then you're stuck with a school that you don't like so make sure that you want to go to any all all of the schools that you apply to I was actually really lucky I got rejected by the Two and a half out of the nine schools I applied to. Nine. Oh, I was wow. like really confused where you were going. Wow. I was told three reach, three like Ooh. standard and three safety. Mm-hmm. So I did that, and um, it was it was great. I got accepted to a lot of great schools. I would have liked to go to most of them. Can you explain the half? The half. So I I got um, rejected by BCC and BU, which I knew I wasn't going to get into. They were my reach schools. I got also a very average student, um, and then I got waitlisted at Emerson. Oh, okay. And they were like, mmm, you're waitlisted. And I like had liked Emerson. And then I like went to the um, one of the like open houses, and the students that were in like looking at the writing program weren't my kind of people. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, which isn't to say like anything against them. They're great students. Emerson has a great writing program, but I it was a different sort of writing, a different sort of idea around the subject. Um, most of the people going there were like, oh, I want to get into creative writing and I'm going to be a published author and I wanted to look at more of the business side of things. And they had options for that, but my peers, who I would be taking classes with, weren't interested in that kind of thing. Mm-hmm. And that was kind of what, like, I didn't really want to, like I said, it's a great school, it's a great program, it fits for a lot of people, it just didn't fit for me. And I was actually kind of glad I got rejected because then I wouldn't have to be like, oh, yeah, I don't want to go to this amazing program. Mm-hmm. I feel like it's also, like, well, how you make the college, like, experience. You can make the opportunities really good. You could do a lot of good internships and still come out with, like, a really good degree. And you'd have all that experience to take them into the real world. And it's, I feel like when you go into the real world after, it's like, yeah, you went to a nice school that definitely might give you a leg up in finding a job. But it's, you know, if you went to a good school and didn't do internships or didn't do any opportunities, like, that's not going to help you because nowadays they want experience. Like, it's all about Fun fact, the name of your college only helps with your first job. After that, they only want experience. That's why if, so that's why when you're applying to your too. second job, your education on your resume goes to the bottom because they, your employers are just looking at what experience you have. So if you um, went to a top-tier school and then you went to your first job and it was kind of like low-grade, you didn't get too much experience doing a bunch of different things, you go to a second job and they're looking for X, Y, Z qualifications. If someone went to like a state school that is not as top tier and they got more experience through internships and their first job, then it's more of a balance than like, oh, look at my fancy name school. Ah, so Carnegie yeah. Darley likes your eye. <laughs> they also like Champlain because there's three of us here. <laughs> That's true. Actually, they like Westfield. I think there's three of us here. Oh, really? Oh, sweet. Two or three, yeah. You have to compete? Yeah. I think I'm the only one. I'm the partner, and I'm looking at you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I feel like we have a lot of UMass. Yeah, there's a lot of UMass. There. But it is Massachusetts, so we get a lot of UMass. <laughs> that makes sense. But yeah, that's uh, for the experience. And yeah, going back to what I said earlier about even if you don't get in to college and you have the ultimate rejection, uh, it's not the end of the world because get that hands on experience. And like even for something in my field is you can take like a boot camp for coding and it's usually like, I don't know, 500 plus hours or whatever it is. Um, and you graduate with a degree, um, you're certified, depending on what program that you decide to go into. And now being in the position that I am, if I get a resume with something like that on, it's like, oh, I can see that you have the technical experience, like show me the work and the college doesn't really matter that much. Um, I, that's different across all the fields. Yeah. Uh, but for something that's definitely uh, hands-on tech uh, related where it's just can you do it and can you do it cleanly that's really what matters okay so the third question we have today is what exactly is a gap year a gap year happens every four years it's called a year. <laughs>
Question number. <laughs> okay, so I got here in okay. terms of technical wise, technical wise, the school year for gap year is basically you're going and you decide, we've talked about this actually for before you go to college, you take a year off and you kind of go exploring. It's really big in uh, the UK. Yeah. Uh, I was going to say England, but UK in general. So Even yeah, Europe. Yeah, in Europe general. in general. Yeah. yeah. UK and England are the same thing. Yeah, no, <laughs> England is up to the UK. Okay, we're learning geography. <laughs> but, um, we so apologize. It's all for teaching. Yes. This is my moment to shine. So, yeah, it's, re it's really big in Europe, and uh, what happens is they take a year off, and it's a lot of, well, depending on who does it and what they do, but it's usually traveling and exploring yeah. the world, and then they jump into the education because it's, hey, this is my last chance to really have the freedom and the opportunity to go around yep. and explore and see all these things. Um, so that's what a gap year is, um, but internally we talked about how you can potentially take a gap year in the middle of your school too, mm -hmm. um, and that happens for a number of reasons, so I'm just going to go into my rabbit hole and then you guys can discuss what um, happened with you or your friends, but uh, my friend Steve, what's up Steve Bingham? Uh, we went to school together at Champlain, and they did a study abroad program in Quebec or Montreal. I'm going to get it wrong. Montreal. Uh, Montreal. Thanks. Um, <laughs> Got you. So, yeah, it's uh, with Ubisoft. Um, if you guys like video games, uh, there's a great program where you can actually go to Ubisoft and work with, well, you have teachers that work from Ubisoft. And so he ended up going up there for a semester, um, had some really bizarre things happen to him while he was up there uh, his first week and decided that I need to get out of here. Um, this is really sketchy, I'm, I'm not gonna go into details, but uh, he decided to did bounce. Did he run into a moose? Uh, he did not run into a moose. Right. Yeah, he, moose uh, are sketchy. Like. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he listened Christy. to jazz music and he ate microwave vegetables. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> but uh, no, so he had some stuff happen to him and he was like, I gotta get out of here. Um, and so he ended up bouncing back to Massachusetts and he took a semester off. And uh, so it's not technically a gap year, it's a gap semester, uh, but then he ended up coming back, he switched majors um, and ended up graduating just a year after us. Uh, during his gap year off, he actually explored doing different things with video games because that's what he was in and realized he hated it, uh, which is something that you might want to be aware of if you're a big video game guy because it's not all sunshine and rainbows when you think of like just hanging out playing. <laughs> um, there's a lot of work that goes into it and a lot of overtime, a lot of hours. Uh, and he became quickly aware of that during his gap and decided that, hey, this is not right for me. So it's important that, yeah, you can go exploring and do all these things, but also explore the job and explore what you're going to be getting yourself into and really reconsider everything that you're going to be doing. Yeah, yeah. I think... No, no you go. Uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think a lot of people also like take a gap year kind of to not like take time off from school, and learning. Um, I think it's just, you know, get that experience. You've been in school for the past, like, 12, 13 years just doing the same thing mm -hmm. all the time. So you've never, you might not have been out in the world as much. So now it's, like, a year to maybe travel um, or take a year just to work a part-time or full-time job, make some money, and then go to school. But it's not the same as going abroad. Like, yeah. it's taking a gap year. is not the same as traveling for study abroad. Yeah. Um, study abroad, you're going and you're taking classes while you're abroad. If you're taking a gap year, usually you're just traveling. You can yeah. sometimes yeah. take classes. You can sometimes there take was, classes. Um, there was a post on College Express like a week or so, maybe a couple weeks ago, about different gap year programs, and some of them have classes that you can take, and they go all over the world, and it's a specific class, but you do different things. It can be volunteering, it can be work, and there are different opportunities for that kind of thing. But it's not connected like with your college. Yeah. Yeah, to go back to your point, um, before you so rudely interrupted me interrupting you. It's the teacher. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> I know, it's coming out. <laughs> right in between you two. Like, yeah. Yeah. Um, what, that's exactly what one of my friends did. Uh, he went to, he started at Hope College um, and ended up coming home, taking a gap year. He wasn't feeling it, wasn't vibing with him. He was having fun and he was in a, in a frat, I think. Yes, he was in a frat. He was having fun, had friends, um, but he just wasn't sure if that's what, if his major is what he wanted to do, didn't know where he wanted to go into a different field instead, 
So he took a gap year, which, I mean, ultimately, he has not gone back to school because he's taken different routes and he's taken his own EMT classes. I think he's doing police studying for the academy now. He's trying to go all the first responder routes, I guess. Um, But that it was kind of the same thing, like discover, get into a field, test it out, see if that's where you want to go. You can come home and try it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, A lot of students will also take gap years because they're just not ready to go to college, and that's okay. Um, Some schools will defer for a year, and a lot of schools will encourage that too. Um, If you get accepted and you say, I kind of want to hold back and go and work for a year, they'll talk to them and see if you can defer for a year or even a semester if that's all you need. Um, Some students will also take a gap year or a gap semester if there's a family hardship or a family crisis. Um, that comes up and you you're like I need more time and schools are very understanding of that kind of thing and like I said there are programs like we've talked about that you can work um, during that time as well um, and just kind of kind of figure out what's going on if you want to explore different things if you're like I'm not ready to go to college you can even put off um, applying for a year if you know you want to take a gap year um, and work in different industries and try to figure out what you want to do because honestly It's kind of ridiculous. You guys are 17, 18 years old, and we're trying to force you to figure out what you want to do for the rest of your life. So if you're like, I want to take a gap year and see the world, um, do these different programs, do some volunteering, do some work in different fields, that's completely understandable. And that's the kind of experience that's going to help you figure out what you want to do, what you want to go to college for if you want to go to college, if you want to go to college in general. And it's going to help you learn these different things. And that's why a lot of people... Uh, a lot of students will take a gap year. Um, it's just to figure everything out, and that's okay. Um, I feel like there's a stigma against gap years sometimes, um, but not everyone moves at the same speed. And it's okay if you need that time to explore, to learn, to work, to figure things out. My cousin started school last year, and she ended up leaving school midway through the semester because she realized she wasn't ready for it. She was. 11 hours from home and she wasn't ready to be that far from her parents and that's okay and she's like I'm gonna go back to school I just need time and it's fine if you need time and I don't think we say that enough so it's fine if you need time work at your own pace you're gonna get the degree no matter what it's gonna say the year that you got it not how long it took also your experience in that gap year can make for a killer college application application, like essay you'll have something to write about that could be far more interesting than what you did in high school. You never know. Yeah. That's even, uh, like, we talked about before college, during college, after college. So if you're considering going to grad school, Mm -hmm. uh, like, my wife Emily is just finishing up her graduation degree, or graduation degree, (laughs) her, um, uh, her grad school for teaching for nursing. And so... We had two years, and then she decided, okay, now's the time I'm ready to go back. She was well-established in what she was doing for work. She had gotten into that position where, hey, I'm comfortable. This is great. I'm moving up in the company. I think I can handle it, and I'm going to continue to work full-time and then take grad school programs too. And that ended up working out great because it technically is a gap two year. Um, but uh, Gap years. Gap years, yeah. There's a Z. <laughs> Cool. <laughs> um, we already discussed yeah. we're not cool. <laughs> it goes back to the part jazz. Of the table. That's why he likes This part jazz. of the table is not cool because of jazz. Jazz has two Z's. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, so you can take the, the time to, like I said, save up money and kind of get yourself established and make sure you want to continue in that career. So she, at the time, was a hospice nurse. And then she moved into nurse management, and then now she's into nurse teaching. So she was like, hey, I really like the education aspect um, when she made that first switch, and I want to pursue that. So once you're in the field, you can kind of get a better feel of what you want to further pursue and then take that year to manipulate. Also, some workplaces will help pay for your grad school. So if you take that gap year in between your undergrad and your grad school, then you can get a job. They might have some programs that will give you a certain allotment, or they'll pay for it. Some places yeah. pay for your whole degree, which is awesome. But um, that kind of is, I mean, that goes into the next question. 
later on about financial help, but it's definitely something to consider if you don't want to keep adding up a bunch of money. This, go on. No, I was going to say, I definitely, once I was in college, I thought about taking a gap year, and I kind of had wish I took one between high school and college, because not that I wasn't prepared for college, I just felt like I wasn't in a place where I wanted to go to college. Like, I went because I felt like I had to, and I couldn't take that year. Um, but I had no idea what I wanted to do freshman year, and it wasn't until the end of my sophomore year that I actually declared my major. But I feel like that gap year would have helped me and I would have figured out maybe what I wanted to do within the first year I was in college and then I would have had more time to do like the internships and everything so even if you're thinking about it just maybe do some research yep. into it and um definitely don't just like decide on a whim that hey I'm not gonna go to college yep. for a year like do the work do the research create like a pros and cons list figure and, out if it's right for you sheet. In a spreadsheet. Definitely a spreadsheet. How can you do anything in life without a spreadsheet? (laughs) (laughs) Um, There's also, we've talked about the option of a grad year after college, if you think you go to grad school. Um, Even if you're planning to just go into a career, there are gap year options like AmeriCorps, Peace Corps, um, volunteering opportunities where you go to a different country and you speak, you you speak, you teach English. Um, as a second language, <laughs> 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 you imagine those as a second language, and that might might not that those might be your career goals. But if they're not, then those are still options for you to like go learn different things, have a different experience, speak English. Put that on your resume. <laughs> I went to Africa and I spoke English. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, for a year, and I spoke English. Wow, year, whole gap year. Just sounds like a flashback. I'm walking over. Hey, so, yeah. yep. Can you so talk everybody. about your experience? <laughs> <laughs> yes, this is my experience. I can just picture some of the things like Tyler says. Like I'll like message Tyler and he'll be like, "Cool beans" or something. Like he would just say stuff like that back to people, and they would just like try to teach them English. Yeah, they'd just be like, "Cool beans, call back at me." <laughs> I feel like that would be a great class. That would be an amazing class. I would take that class. <laughs> So those are some options. <laughs> um, yeah. <laughs> um, Just the way I spell stuff too. <laughs> it's true. It's yeah. like cools, K E W L. It's the Z. It's the Z. The Z makes it cooler. <laughs> um, I think too. Is there a Z on spreadsheets? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um. Okay. Also, <laughs> I'm going to be boring and bring it back, but uh, um, don't be afraid in the middle of, of college. Like, also, I know we keep talking about in the middle, but um, if something happens, like, and you need to get yourself back on track, you can take that gap year because of that. It doesn't, I don't know, it doesn't have to be because you're indecisive or anything like that. Like, one of my friends ended up getting really sick. He had mono for, like... I don't know, two months, three months, and it really affected his grades, and he, like, couldn't go to classes. I don't think he was able to take exam. I think he was just all messed up, and instead of trying to retake those classes right away next semester, he was like, you know what, I need a year to regroup. He took a year off. Um, At the time, he was, when he got sick, he was going to Delaware. You, you, Delaware, I think. Um... And then he ended up coming back home, did a gap year, and now he's actually going to UMass Lowell. So, I mean, no harm in coming home. Also, then he decided he could do it from home and focus a little better because he wasn't in a frat and do his thing, actually do some school stuff. Um, but then he was healthy again, and he wasn't stressed out trying to do it, getting right back on track. So, yeah. Our last question for today is, what are some ways to get financial aid for college? Number one, fill out the FAFSA. Don't say, oh, we don't make enough money or we make too much money or whatever. Fill out the FAFSA no matter what. There could be money that you get for the randomest things and you want to make sure that you get it. Also, a lot of colleges will use the FAFSA to decide what they give you as far as aid and you want their money that they're going to give you. Because you're giving straight up. money. Yeah. And if they're going to give you money, then you don't want to have to give them money because you didn't fill out your FAFSA. Mm -hmm. So fill it out. Fill it out ASAP. It opens on October 1st. Do it. 
Um, I had a friend who is going back to school and she's talking to me in November and she's like, oh, I'm so mad. I have to apply for this. My dad needs to give me, give us financial information because I don't count as an adult student. And I'm like, yeah, you do. She's like, no, I don't because I have to apply for this year. And I'm like, no, you have to apply for next year because it opens in October. And she's like, oh. So she didn't apply for the FAFSA and she's not going to school for another year. Because she would That's definitely true. get a lot of grant money that she is going to lose out on now because she didn't apply. Mm -hmm. So fill it out ASAP. It's first come, first serve. You can get a lot of grants for all sorts of different things. Fill out the FAFSA. Colleges will give you money for merit, for talent, for athletics, uh, in different ranges. You don't always get the full boat. For, you can get it, well, yeah, I mean, you can get it for your family background. Yep. Like, that's true. I potentially could have uh, applied for it. Um, could have gotten it for being, well, one, being the first generation of my family to go to a four-year school. Lots of money for um, that. Also, because I'm Hispanic, you can tell. My last name's Hernandez. But, <laughs> um, yeah, I was, I was eligible for some to go to that school, so that was... Stupid, I, I could have gotten a scholarship for being left-handed. I didn't go to that what? school. What? Yes, one school does it. <laughs> That's okay. I think it's I could have gotten it, but Junita. It's somewhere in Tennessee, I believe. Didn't know. Um, um, it's on College Express. Weird scholarships list. <laughs> didn't know that. Yeah, there's one school that gives Wish you. I, had yep. one of them. I didn't know you were left-handed. I am left-handed. Two lefties in the room. Oh. What up? <laughs> That's really so good. It's coming over, but not. <laughs> Go um, away. <laughs> yeah, mine was the, the. I could have gone to Central Connecticut State with first year generation being Hispanic, and it ended up being the same cost as Westfield without anything. And my mom was like, "You should just apply and find out how much they're willing to give you because of this offer that yep. they're already telling you you're eligible yep. for." Didn't do it. Went to Westfield. Tons of debt now. <laughs> now I regret it every day in my life that yeah. I did it spitefully against my mom to not even try it. Yeah. The, also, make sure you check for scholarships you have to apply to through the college that's separate from the application. Yeah. Uh, and see if you need to fill out the CSS profile, because some schools will require that. It's a different profile than the FAFSA, but they pull similar information, but the like college looks at it differently. Does not stand for... Cascading style sheets. It's <laughs> not different CSS. Yes. I have also gotten that confused. <laughs> I, when I read it the first time, I was like, Ooh, what is this? Wrong. <laughs> Wrong. Sheets with a Z. Sheets. C-Z-Z. <laughs> <-Z> -Z. <laughs> uh, <laughs> also, um, I got two $2,000 scholarships from different colleges that I applied to because I applied early action. Mm. That's not the one that's early binding. Time. It's the one that you get to go to other schools, and they're like, apply early action, and you automatically get $2,000. I'm like, hello, it is I. <laughs> it's early. <laughs> give me money. I think also when you're looking for money, like most people will just go straight to Google and be like, give me money, find me scholarships. Yeah. I think the best place to look is like either ask your guidance counselor or go to your community. Guidance counselor's huge. Because they're yeah. not as yeah. competitive when they're in, within your community. Yeah. Like, yeah, you have the people like, in your town. If they, yeah. they have a lot of town scholarships, but it's not as big as, you know, the internet. Um, and also, I had a part-time job at Market Basket, and they gave every employee who just filled out a form a scholarship. Yeah. You just have to know about the scholarship um, and then let them know you want a form and fill yeah. it out. And I, it's like a good amount of money that they'd yeah. give you. So it's just kind of knowing, like, Asking around, asking other people who've been to college and filled out scholarships, and then asking people in your town, like, what's available, what kind of scholarships can I apply for? There may also be grants that you can apply for, which is also free money. Um, that you that We call it free money because you don't have to pay back. And it you fill out the FAFSA so that you can get that through the federal government and through the state government. Uh, but there are also, like, nonprofit agencies that do it, too. Also look into state programs. Um, working on an article for you guys. You're welcome. Because mm -hmm. um, certain states will waive um, tuition for college students. Uh, so Massachusetts has the John and Abigail Adams Scholarship, where if you get a certain grade on, I think it's like you get the advanced and then the proficient in a couple of different um, 
subjects for the MCAS, um, then you get free tuition. That does not include fees and room and board, mm -hmm. but tuition is like $5,000, $7,000 that you no longer have to pay back. So there's that going for you. It could like have the amount that you have to pay the college. All about it. <laughs> so sneaky one that's not an obvious one, but um, applying to be an RA um, once you're in college, which Kara has done. <laughs> Uh, depending on what school Saves you're going to. Saves you $5,000 a year at least. Yeah. Um, as you mentioned, you know, getting tuition waived, but at the same time, if you become an RA, depending on what school you're going to, it could be room and board, which is huge. Um, so it's something you don't really think about, especially if you're commuting, uh, which you didn't end up doing, but at the same time, if you became an RA, <laughs> <That's cool. laughs> uh, you could be saving that that amount of money every single semester that you are an RA well, technically getting paid for it too, yeah. depending on what school you're uh, going yeah. to. Yeah, some pay you so, while well, giving you free room and board, some will just pay you, not give you the free room and board, some give you nothing. I'm just kidding. Um, really? <laughs> some, uh, like I said, make uh, sure you ask yeah. me, you get them. Yeah, at Champlain, we got um, free room. We still had to pay for the food, um, but we also got a certain amount for a stipend per semester. So we got a certain amount per semester, and it was like paid piecemeal throughout the, the semester, which is great. Um, work study is also an option if you can get that through the FAFSA. Also, um, something to consider, which I was able to find easily because I knew I wanted to look at places close to me, you can get, if you're not in state, if you want to get right over the border, some places offer a proximity rate. So, mm -hmm. like, obviously out of state is usually far more than in state, but for instance, I lived so close to the border of Massachusetts, and I went to Massachusetts State College or University, so... I was only, I, sh I could have been out of state, but I knew that I got proximity rate, which was only $1,000 more than in-state because I lived so close. And I think there's one that's New England proximity rate, so that's one that I think most New England states I think do. Most regions in the U.S. have a regional, like regional program. One, some of them you have to, like, if you're going to an out-of-state mm -hmm. school, it has to have a program that is not available in your state for you to get the in-state rate. Right. But there are a bunch of different options with that, too. I mean, if you wanted to take a gap year and work in the state where the school you're going to is, then you could get the in-state well, school, definitely. paying taxes there for a year and having a permanent mm -hmm. residence there. Mm -hmm. Just a suggestion. I almost did that when I went to Georgia. Mm -hmm. But, um... Yeah, that saved me so much because I was like, oh, cool, I could have gone to my state's university versus, which actually, then Westfield State, with my proximity rate, was the same amount as Central Connecticut for me for being in-state. So it ended up being comparable, and that's why I was able to choose between the two so e easily. But, um, yeah, that's what they would consider for sure. So I found out last year after I graduated, that if I had gone to school in Canada, I would have gotten a huge um, discount on my, on my tuition because my mom is Canadian. And they told me this while I was crossing the border, like at the border, they're doing the whole check of the car and checking our passports. And they're like, are you going to school? I'm like, I just graduated. She's like, you should have gone to a school in Canada. Really, really good rate. I'm yeah. like, Good to know, now yeah. that I'm done. <laughs> Maybe under, grad school. Yep. Don't underestimate the um, international experience because you can A, get a lot of scholarships, and B, a lot of schools internationally are cheaper. <laughs> and Canada's awesome. Canada's great. Nineteen. Ah, uh, poutine. <laughs> Go Moose. Montreal. Moose. 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 Maple syrup. <laughs> What's the name of the bridge that you get on and you can't turn around? I don't know. You know what I'm talking about? No, you stopped your brother for that one. <laughs> yeah, because this is a great story with my brother in law and his best friend who is from China. And so the two of them were just exploring Vermont and they ended up on that one way street going to Canada and they couldn't turn around. Uh, he's on a student visa. And so they got to the border and they were like, get out of the car. <laughs> he, he was stuck there for I don't know how many hours, but they yeah. were able to like get him and turn around. Yeah. And he stayed in the state. And yeah. But, so yeah, just, just yeah. heads up. Be when careful you when you're traveling internationally. Uh, yeah. yeah. Um, I think also, again, life regrets. Um, <laughs> my 
so uh, my parents are divorced, and so I probably could have been on either of theirs if I really wanted to. I don't know if this is sketchy or not, but it's fine. It depends <laughs> on the state, and I know what you're going to say. <laughs> no, no um, I immediately was like, I'm going to put my, like, I live with my mom, and I mean, my parents have joint custody, but I live with my mom, so automatically, first thought, doing my fast up, yeah, absolutely, do my mom. Um, definitely could have gotten more aid if I had gone with my dad. Um, just yeah. some hindsight. Think about it when you're actually filling that out. Because I know friends that were in the same financial bracket as my dad, and they got paid yeah. to go to school. The school paid them after yeah. their four years because they needed that much aid. And I was like, could have been me. Yeah. But no, I have yeah. thousands of dollars of debt because I went with my mother. If so. your parents have a 50-50 custody, have the one who makes less fill up the facts. And you I didn't was, hear that from us. <laughs> but like, Except I think we have like three articles that say that. <laughs> I'm a first generation in my family, like I said, and we just didn't know what we were doing at the time. We're like, this makes sense. Like, all my mail comes here. So we wanted the bills to yeah. go there. If we just owned my dad, we wouldn't have even had the bills. Yeah. <laughs> so think about it. Also, if you bring up the fact that you're first generation, there are tons of scholarship for that. Um, yeah, even, we said yeah. that, yeah. So, regrets. A lot of regrets. Um, also, student loans are an option. They're not my favorite option. <laughs> like, Christina, I have tons of debt. Um, no so regrets. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, I got Navion. I got oh, I no, got the I US have, government coming at got me. Got that MIFA. Yep. Just got, <laughs> just got my email saying your money's coming out and I'm like, thank you for that. <laughs> um they're an option, like not your favorite option, but they're a thing to do um if you really want this college. It is an investment in yourself. Also, uh, according to Forbes, one of the things on the rise right now as far as benefits is college loan repayment plans. So, when you're looking for jobs as you're exiting college with your ton of debt, then uh, look to see what benefits they offer, such as college loan repayment. You may have to stick with the company for a few years, but it's worth it, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. for the most part. Mm -hmm. um, I feel like even if I hated a job and they were like, we're going to pay off all your student loan, I'd be like, okay. <laughs> I'll, I'll be here it forever. Work. I'll make it work. <laughs> I'll make it work. <laughs> I might be crying in the bathroom, but I can go what shopping after. Yeah. At least I have money. Just listen to jazz. <laughs> Sit there with listening to jazz, <laughs> eating my microwave ice cream all day. It's fine. At your desk. I might do it. But at least I don't have loans. <laughs> Yeah. This is not the situation they're in right now. No, no, no. I love no, my job. No, no, no. 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 I love my true. job. <laughs> very happy to be here. here. No, like very happy that I'm here. <laughs> Do not eat Just like really cream cream trying to like say how crazy they're going here. No, no. no, no like, that's fine. fine. No, I love this job. I drive an hour a day to get to this job. It's fine. <laughs> um, yeah. There's, there's <laughs> options for you even if you do have student loans. Plus, we were just talking about um, student loan refinancing. So, so like, when you do have to take out the loans and you're hopefully not crying and going insane, yep. you can you can refinance later yep. and make it easier. Yep. Or you can consolidate to um, the federal government if you have loans where they're like similar. And this is you only really want to do this if they're similar in the amount of um, percentage of interest. Uh, because if you go to the federal government and you go, I want to consolidate my loans, it will pull all of your loans into one lump sum with one interest rate, and that interest rate is the, um, the mean, the average of all of the um, loans that you took. So if you have like a 7% loan and a 2% loan, don't consolidate. Pay off the 7% loan and then consolidate what's left if you can. Um, just because that would like raise your interest rate from the two percent, you want to keep it as low as possible. You're a helpful person to have around. <laughs> she I've done. So I've done so much research you on think this. We sit and listen to jazz and eat microwave ice cream. We look up how to refine oh. our loans. Yeah, no, it's great. So one <laughs> thing that's great about this job. Importing life <laughs> skills. <laughs> microwave ice cream. <laughs> What's great about um, this job, on top of many things, um, is that part of 
being an editor here is that I write stuff for College Express. And you'll see me my name on some things on College Express. And I research for those articles. So if I'm like, I feel like this is a really good topic for students, I will go and research it and get that knowledge and repeat it here and then put it in the article for you. And then do it for yourself. And then do it for myself. It's like, oh. She is just the, the advice lady. There should be like a column on College Express with Kara. <laughs> like, ask Kara. Thank you for watching this episode of the College Express podcast. We hope you learned all about your color decision methods and how you can go about choosing colleges and how to pay for them. And I want to give a special thank you for Christina for joining us today. So thank you very much. Hopefully we'll see you uh, on future podcasts and hopefully we can skate your way with jazz music and ice cream. We're all ready for it. Yeah, so that's what we're doing after this podcast. (laughs) So if you guys don't know, we film this once a month right at the start of the month and it will go out the first week of the month, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, our one question and the question gets answered by us. And so if you want to piecemeal it, you can. It's a lot of fun. Or you can wait till Friday, and Friday the entire podcast comes out for your listening pleasure. So you can go in and listen to all the topics. We also timestamp it, so if you want to jump around to the topics, or you can, again, go back to those individual videos and watch it. If you like this, please uh, smash that like button. Uh, Also, press the subscribe button, and uh, then you're going to be staying up to date on all things College Express. You're going to get information from all sorts of things. We have the College Cooking Channel. We have the College Conversations. We have students coming in now with their college decision letters. So there's so much fun stuff that comes in for College Express. And the most important thing is, if you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below, and we will read them here and answer your questions as best we can, which is really good.